That's a three. Yeah, buddy. That's a three. Good job, man. Oh. Roll it. What's up, folks? Today I want to talk to you a little bit about how to fish docks. Give you some baits. In particular, we're going to talk about, um, I guess you would call them fixed position docks. Not the floating ones, not the ones with floats. The ones that's got a post that goes down in the mud and a platform. We actually don't, where I live, there's very few lakes with those types of docks. Uh, but I, I do fish those occasionally and most of you lakes most of you guys lakes are gonna have these fixed position docks But I like fishing docks man that 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 is anytime I get bit or I know if my pattern going into a tournament is fishing docks I get excited It's like oh Jesus you love me. Oh Jesus you love me. So We're gonna talk about the elements of a dock like just we're gonna pull up to one dock and I'm going to just talk to you about what's good about a dock, what you should be looking for when you pull up to a dock, some of the baits that I like to use for fishing docks, uh, the cast that I like to make first when fishing docks, and what times of the year do you look for certain things when fishing docks. So this is going to be your dock fishing extraordinaire today. All right. That's what we're going to go through. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie on, tie on the bait. <clears throat> and we're just going to start off with the most versatile. If you don't know how to fish docks and you're, you're kind of worried about where to start, what bait should I use, Brian? Where's, what should I be looking for? Where we're going to start is just, let's just keep it simple, doggone. All right? We're going to keep it real simple. What you need to do is go in your tackle box. You're going to get you a bullet sinker. And you're going to go in there and get you probably a three or four hook. All right. Don't worry about all them fancy baits. Don't worry about the plopper whoppers and the juka jockers and all of that fancy stuff that you're going to see on the shelves. You already don't know nothing, so don't try to do all of that. When I say you, I'm talking about me too. All right. Keep it simple. So get you a simple bait you got confidence in. For me, it's going to be a Texas rig. For you, it might be something else. I don't know. It might be a shaky head. Or you might like a wacky rig or whatever it is. For most instances, I'm going to use a 316 ounce Texas rig, tungsten sinker, and a three or four aught hook, depending on what plastic I got, right? So do that. Get you whatever your favorite uh, seven foot to seven foot, seven and a half foot rod is. Put you some 15 to 20 pound test fluorocarbon and come on out here on the lake with me. That, that's what we're going to do, all right? So. Let's not get too, on this video, let's not get too in the weeds on the rods, reels, and lines. Because I'm, I'm going to tell y'all, like, I know I do a lot of videos on rod, reel, line setups and baits and so forth. At the end of the day, you probably can catch fish on just about any plastic if you know how to approach the dock right. The biggest thing you're going to get from this video is what to look for and once you pull up to the dock what what am i what am i targeting you know getting a feel for for what you're what you're trying to do i'm gonna let y'all figure out what kind of baits you want to throw i'll t i'll tell you what i'm throwing but at the end of the day if you had if you had 10 different anglers in my boat right now talking about dock fishing every it, you'd had 15 different baits we'd all talk about in 15 different setups but just get you something that your doggone got confidence on and get up on the front deck and listen to what I'm about to tell you about the dynamics of the actual dock itself. All right? So, uh, let me get some plastic for you. Let's see what I got in here. Let's start fishing these docks. Docks are like people. You got big ones and you got little ones. You got everything in between. Um, and all of them are fair game to catch a fish. You see, I got a little small one here. Bottom line is the bigger the dock, the more shade. All right? The more shade, the more places you have for fish to hide. The more places you got for bait to be. The more places you got for brim to be. So, a couple things you need to think about when you're talking about dock fishing. Why are the fish using the docks in the first place? Well, 
bass in particular are predator feeders. They like to get behind something, they like to get in a sneaky spot, and something swims by and they rush out and they eat it. That's basically, if you, if you use that thought process in all fishing situations, things become simple a lot easier, all right? So what they're doing is they're using these docks as ambush points, all right? It's war going on under this water right here. There's a, there's a war going on all the time. So the soldiers are kind of tucked back in in their little forts, their little docks. Any little shady area, whether it be a pylon, whether it be, you see we have these little houseboat areas here, or the deck. See, there's a, there's, on, these, on this particular lake, there's a couple different components on every dock. You'll notice that every dock has a boathouse that provides shade. Every dock has a platform or a deck that provides shade. Every dock has poles that provide basically a structure or something that the fish can use to cover his eye. I've said this before. When a bass covers his eye, he thinks he's hid. So you can't automatically look at the biggest shade part of the dock and think that's where he's gonna be. Sometimes that's the case, sometimes it's not. So <clears throat> when you look at this dock, you got those three elements. You have the boathouse, the deck, and you have the pylons. Those are gonna be your three obvious places that you can fish when you start breaking this place down. So the first thing that I usually like to think about when I'm, uh, when I'm fishing a dock is number one, the forage. Where are the fish are going? Where are the fish going to be eating? That always always depends on the lake. Depends on the time of the year. Right now it's fall time, so typically if a fish is on the docks, they're using for an ambush point to attack shad. Now, if it was a different time of the year, if we were here in the winter time or in the springtime, they would be using the dock for a totally different reason. Right now it's fall time, so typically it's about shad. Anytime the water is warmer. Rule of thumb, just just a general rule of thumb. This isn't the way it always works. Probably going to focus on the front halves of the docks. So the deeper, deeper parts of the docks. That first pole on the right is going to be probably the deepest part of this dock, right? Just right there on the corner. I'll usually make my first flip just right here to the corner. Low hanging fruit. There's deeper water right there. That's a post right there. You, if you think about it, if you were under that dock you have a vision almost 180 degrees. You can see, you can sit under there and see what's coming this way, you can see what's coming that way, you can see what's coming in front of you. It's just a great ambush point right there on the corner. So I'll probably make my first flip just right there. Bop, just flip it in there. Whatever you choose to flip. I'm just flipping a small stick bait right now. It could be a jig, it could be a tube, it could be 20 different things you could flip in there. All right, the reason I like that, you see this, this deck here? All of that shade. That was covered, there's probably bluegill, there's probably crappy, there's probably all kind of stuff up under there in that shade pocket. Now, you see we also have posts on the dock too. Usually the fish are gonna be on the post or the ladders because that's on a fixed position dock. You know what the posts do? The posts hold algae. Why is that important? Well, the little fish, the big fish eat little fish and the little fish eat plants the algae around the posts are going to hold little minnows they'll hold little crustaceans and just depends on what your body of water is and what the forage fishing that is is in that body of water that algae on the post isn't just there just because of there there's small fish that are feeding on that the little brim and everything they're eating the algae that grows on the post so that's why docks and any kind of structure in the water is is uh, is always a uh, a hot spot for forage that's why the fish are always there so you're gonna have a lot of different things going on inside this under the dock because of the shade because of the post because of the algae all of that is food and habitat and structure so hitting those outside posts the posts I'll, I'll always give extra attention to the posts especially in the fall time of the year if it was the springtime of the year I probably would focus more on the, the posts that are shallower towards the back because they'll spawn near those posts as well and the shallower water warms up quicker. If it was in the springtime, we had a big cold front come through, I might focus on the front post again. Why? The deeper water. See what I'm saying? So there's always a strategy involved when you're, when you're fishing a dock. Now this particular dock doesn't have a, a, a ladder, but I love ladders. 
ladders, if you imagine under the water, that is a differentiation between everything else. You got single post, single post, and then all of a sudden you got two posts close together with, with wood going across it. They use those. It's more contact points for algae, more that means you have more food there for brim and minnows or whatever the forage fish is. You think the bass don't know that that's where they need to hang out at? It's like a buffet right there. More plants mean more forage fish. More forage fish means more attention from the bass. So I'll start to concentrate on that. I'm gonna flip all of it when I come here, but I'll, I'll give it more attention to the ladder. So I'll just kind of, I'll work pretty quickly, just depending on the day, I'll hit the corners, I'll hit the ladders, anything that's different about the dock, I'm gonna hit it. So I'll hit that corner. I usually just let it hit the bottom. And you can use this for whatever bait that you're choosing to fish with, you can use the same concept. You're gonna, your approach is what we're talking about here, not baits. None of that stuff. We're, we're concentrating on why am I fishing docks and what should I be looking for at the docks, okay? Now you come over here to this boathouse. Now it gets really interesting because you see all that shade you got in there in, in the boathouse. You know a bass will use that, the shade as an ambush point. So it's got block here. That's going to be real important. In the springtime of the year when the water is in the 40s, 50s, and rising, that block there is going to hold heat. That's basically nothing but the riprap. Also, remember, they had to build this. This didn't just pop up in the, in the lake and they had a boathouse here. So they probably had to excavate. There's probably a little bit deeper water where that, where that boat is setting. All right. So that's going to give you a, a little cavern for the fish to set in there and hide and ambush prey fish. Then on the outside, if I was building a boathouse like this out of block, I'm pretty sure I would have had to dig a footing, right? So even though that looks nice and smooth down the side of there, I guarantee you if the water were to fall five or six foot, you would probably see some gravel, some bigger chunks of rock at the foot of the boathouse, which in turn just turns into either a, a seawall or riprap. So don't be scared to take your crankbait and run that down the side of there. That's also going to be a place where fish can hide. When you have that rock that's at the bottom of the boathouse, all those little crevices are going to hold some type of prey fish or some type of crawdad, something that those fish can eat. I don't know what it is, gummy bears. There's gonna be something down there that they're gonna probably wanna eat. So you wanna give that special attention too. So as I start to talk about that, you can see why docks, no matter what time of year, spring, summer, fall, winter, it's almost always a good bet to hold a bass. So now that it's fall time and I know the fish are, are probably feeding on shad, you know, you can, I started off with something slow, it's something that's, uh, you can always count on the Texas rig, right? And, but I will use some moving baits. Sprinter baits and crank baits always work good around docks too, especially this time of the year, because we all know that during the fall, it becomes more of a shad forest type of bite. Almost, I don't care where you are. And so, um, I'm just throwing a little crank bait here. And it takes a little bit more skill, a little bit more patience fish a crankbait around the dock because obviously it just doesn't throw quite as well you got to have a little bit more distance between you and the dock to uh, to fish it properly so it can it can take a little bit more uh, a little bit more skill a little bit more patience to uh, to fish the crankbait but it's a great bait to use around docks as well fish are usually active in the fall when you find them they're hard to find in the fall but typically they are active now in the winter time and especially even in the spring when they're spawning the crankbait may not be the best choice on the dock simply because a lot of times you got to aggravate the fish in the bite. Another element that I like on docks, now you don't see it that often here. This is the one dock that I found that's somewhat similar to what I'm about to tell you about. But uh, anytime you're fishing fixed position docks, a catwalk. I don't know what it is about the catwalk. I think it's the having the multiple posts back to back. Catwalk is basically gonna be the walkway going down to the platform of any kind of fixed position dock. Even the floating docks, catwalks are always good. Pay very, very close attention to those. Sometimes fish use them a lot. Really any of these areas that I'm talking about when I'm mentioning dock fishing, you have to fish them all until you find a pattern within the day. One of the biggest mistakes that I've noticed when I, when I watch people or I fish behind people that are fishing docks is they kind of fish docks in an oh-by-the-way manner. So what I mean by that, 
you're on the trolling motor at 50 percent and as you're passing by at 50 percent you're just hitting whatever you can cast at while you're going by the dock that is not the way to fish a dock when you pull up to a dock when i say you got to fish it like you have to fish it you, you, you start off you see i got these corners right here i make several pitches to each corner i make several pitches to inside the boat slip i make several pitches down the side of the dock i make several pitches at the ladder until i get on a pattern where i can tell you like hey dude they're on the front ends or they're on the shallowest posts they're on the deepest posts they're on the catwalks they're on the ladders until i get to where i know what the pattern is for the day you got to slow down and fish them there's a lot of different things going on on each and every dock and every dock's different depending on the time of day where the dock is on the cove where it is on the point how the sun is hitting it how the wind is hitting it it's all different and you have to fish the dock now, i don't mean spending 30 minutes by it but as you start to fish docks more you're going to become more efficient at it and you have to take your time and make sure you present the right cast boat control is probably most important on fishing docks boat control is important because that's your footwork the boat is putting you in position to make the right cast. A lot of times if you're having trouble making a good cast at the dock or any kind of structure for that matter. Anytime you're try having trouble making the right cast and it just seems like you're just always too close or, or not far away or you're backlashing a lot. I can guarantee you it's going to boil down to boat control, your trolling motor. Your footwork, it's got, you got to put yourself in position to make the cast. And the only way to do that is what your trolling motor and your boat control, making sure you're handling the boat correctly. You can't make the cast right if the boat's not in the right position. So pay attention to those little, those little small minor details is what's going to separate the amateur dock fishermen from the guys that are really good at fishing docks and becoming really proficient at it. You also, you can pay attention to, uh, you can pattern these docks down to not only they're on the front post, they're on the back post. Not only that, but you also could, could center it down to paying attention to if they're in the backs of pockets, if the docks are on points. Pay close attention to the orientation of the dock. Where it is, is it in the north facing pockets? Is it in the south facing pockets? Is it on the, the pockets that have more shade? Is it on the pockets that have a steeper bank connected to the catwalk. Those little subtle details matter. They're not just always gonna be on any and every kind of dock. There's little subtle details that make each dock a little different. Like, man, I know that was a bite. It was on slack line. There he is again. Little bitty one. How many is right there? Huh? How <laughs> many? Ouch. The bank that the dock is on, the pocket that is on, is it a flat pocket? Is it a deep pocket? Certain times of the year, springtime of the year, the flatter pockets where they can spawn may be better with docks in them. During the, during the fall time of the year when the fish are kind of transitioning from a summer pattern to a, to a winter or fall pattern, Maybe the deeper pockets are going to be better because they hold more shad. You got to think about those things. Pay attention to them when you get bit because that's what's going to make you be able to duplicate the fish catch that you get. When you start paying attention to those minor details, you can say, okay, they're on the docks that are sitting on points. And you start to open up your map on your graph. You open up the, the map and you start to find all the docks that are connected to points. And that's when the day gets interesting. Remember the way you approach the docks. The way you, that's more important than your bait selection. If you know where they are on docks, you probably can catch them on crankbait, spinnerbait, shake your head, Texas rig, drop shot, Carolina rig. Heck, you probably can catch them on a freaking gummy worm if you know the docks they're using. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but you feel me what I'm trying to tell you, right? Concentrate on that. Pay attention to your boat positioning. That's gonna make it easier for you to cast. If you're not familiar with fishing docks or you find it very, very aggravating to cast at docks, start simple. Get your Texas rig out. Put it on spinning combo. Put it on whatever you're not comfortable with spinning combo. Don't use spinning combo. Use a bait casting combo. All right, so dog fishing is fun. You've seen, if you watch my tournament vlogs, you notice I've fished a lot of docks almost every year. It's one of my favorite ways to fish. And that can be yours too if you kind of just start paying attention to some of the subtle details.
Bye.